Hello everyone, my name is Simeon and I'm very happy to be presenting to you our contribution to this year's edition of Middle, that is TGDGM, how to learn unsurprised representations of the brain and clustering brain activity. I will begin this presentation by stating our key modeling assumption and that is that brain activity can be modeled as a spatio-temporal graph where the nodes in this graph represent regions of interest in the brain whereas the edges can be derived as a measure of functional connectivity or even dynamic functional connectivity as I'll explain in this presentation. In addition, uncovering the hidden community structure that is the way the regions of interest cluster in the brain can be key to understanding brain function and dysfunction which is also something that we achieve with our model. The key goal is to learn multi-scale representations of the brain from the subject level, which uh, would incorporate information about the spatio-temporal graph of a single subject to more local representations, such as evolving community and node embeddings. The learned evolving representations uh, can be used for downstream tasks, such as biological size classification or identifying novel subject groupings. In order to explain our model, first I will give some brief notation. We assume that we have S subjects in our dataset and for each subject we have a spatial temporal graph. Each graph has an associated edge set with it at certain time point t and we can and, and you can see an example of this uh, here between some nodes w and c where these nodes belong in a fixed node set v the generative model works as follows first we initialize some embedding matrix alpha then for each subject one to s we initialize for the zeroth time point the node and community embeddings via some neural network transformation of the respective subject embedding. Then we can evolve the node and community embeddings over time with some recurrent neural network, in our case a GRU. And for each edge between nodes W and C, first we sample a hidden community assignment, Z for node W, and then we sample the neighbor C from the respective uh, community. We parameterize all necessary parameter distributions with neural networks and we train the model by maximizing the log level likelihood of the observed data. And you can see details of how this is achieved in our paper. Take a look at some results. We've validated uh, the performance of our model on data from UK Biobank, on fMRI data from 560 gender and age matched subjects. We use the Glasser Perslation um, to derive 360 regions of interest with associated with them time series of length 490. A time window which we slide over the time series uh, is used in order to bin the time series in t divided by w um, different bins that define the level of temporal resolution we can achieve. And then finally, after training our model, we apply logistic regression on the learned embeddings in order to predict biological sex, hence validate the quality of the learned embeddings. We do this at different levels of temporal resolution, as you can see in table one, and we do this for the subject embeddings, the average community embeddings, and also a concatenation between the subject and community embeddings. In brief, the key takeaways here are that our model can in fact achieve pretty good uh, performance of up to 0.8%. Both the community and the subject embeddings are able to achieve such level of performance when it comes to area and the curve. And also it is key to note that we demonstrate that dynamic functional connectivity in fact does improve performance on the task of biological sex classification. Thank you all for listening to my presentation and if you have any other questions I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you again.